Welcome to Hang Time. Well, this week I'm joined by Range Girls GC Captain Bubba Watson, my ex-colleague as well, until he realized he was just too good for us. He's making me caddy for him as well. You're a field guy, so what do you need me for? Just heal it out. Just kind of aim it out there somewhere, huh? Somewhere. Try not to hit it in the water? Mm. Wait, our caddies aren't supposed to say that, are they? Don't hit in the water. Don't hit in the water. You got a lot of room that way. Well, and don't hit it left because I don't really want to go that far left. We're going to go three wood here. What? Why? Because there's water down there and I get nervous. All these people with cameras everywhere. We made Bubba nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of issues. What are you trying to play here, Bubba? So I'm actually going to try to play it um, at the edge of this tree right here and then try to cut it back to the fairway. And really, truthfully, if I hit it good enough, I'm not worried about rough, because it's it'll be have a short enough shot and a good angle into the green. Yeah. So all I'm trying to do is make sure I barely let it fall left. Okay. As long as I do that, I'm good. Okay. Rough or fairway, okay. not really worried about. Uh, just don't hit it right. Perfect. <laughs> don't yeah. don't hit it in the water. No, don't hit it in the water. Hang it. So don't duck hook it. Perfect. Correct. <laughs> Right at that tree. Look at this guy. I mean, what a legend. If only you did this for a living. Let me let me get that for you. Oh, thank you. Know? Don't drop that towel. I'm I you, I'll say this. It, it's it is backwards. weird. It is ba I'm like, this doesn't look right. <laughs> Bubba, since we're here in Chicago, I'm gonna start our little chat by asking you about being a Jordan brand athlete. First of all. Do you know Michael Jordan personally? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why yes. did you laugh? <laughs> because it was just funny. Like he's he's been to many Ryder Cups, Presidents Cup, been to different golf tournaments. I've been to his golf course, and then obviously uh, Michael is the one that makes the decisions which athletes he wants on his team. Well, since you do have a good relationship with him. Are there any interesting stories or any encounters with MJ that you've had that you could maybe share with us? There's, I don't really have any funny ones or anything. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you because I don't want to make Michael mad. <laughs> I mean, that is the true goat when it comes to sports, team sports, he work ethic, yeah, everything, right? Like yeah. he, he's the one that embodies everything that comes to a goat. And when I say a goat, greatest of all time, not golfers on a team. Golfers on a team. So, so <laughs> he could be he a good is, goat. So I don't want to, you know, I, I want to be in his good graces. I would never say anything. And, you know, we hang out. It's just, it's just good talk. And it's not about the world stuff. It's just about, man, what's going on? How's your family? All these things. It's, it's nothing too deep. Did you ever go to any of his games live? No. Um, we watched um, back in the day. It was Channel 9, uh -huh. WGN. Um, so in Pensacola, Florida, um, me and my family would sit around and watch all of his games and, you know, just dream about that, right? Dream about watching him and me doing that, ex excelling in a sport like that, right? Like, yeah. like he's doing, um, try to do that when I grow up. And I guess kind of a small piece of what he's done, right? Winning two majors. Um, yeah. It's like two championships, right? Yeah. Well, speaking of which, Bubba, you're a huge golf star. You're a major champion. We know how much you love golf, but you're also an owner of a minor league baseball team. Let me see if I can get this right. The Pensacola Blue Wahoos. Yes. Yes. That's called Blue Wahoos, yes. Now, what inspired you to, to get into to minor league baseball ownership? Well, it goes back to childhood, right? You have these dreams. You have dreams of playing professional golf. You have dreams of winning majors or winning tournaments and doing these things. But in my head, I had other dreams. I wanted to be a businessman. I wanted to own businesses. I wanted to do good for a city. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do good for our country. I want to do good for our, the world. And so when you dream of things like that, you dream of being a franchise owner. And so when you think about franchise owner, I mean, Yankees are a little out of my price range. They're not for sale. <laughs> and then, so when you start looking at it and then hearing that baseball is coming to Pensacola, knowing the, the, the time me and my dad and my mom spent playing baseball, um, knowing my son playing baseball, mm -hmm. uh, knowing the friendly atmosphere of a baseball game, a minor league baseball game, where it has things in between innings that makes everybody laugh and giggle and have fun. Um, 
why not be a part of that and what it does to the city and how it revitalizes a city having a sports team downtown it was an it was a no-brainer for me i just had to sweet talk the the owner into <laughs> let me let me be a part of it and so it, it was easy it was something i've always dreamed of as being part of a franchise and owning a piece of a franchise oh that's awesome and and really really cool what's the one thing that you enjoy most about being an owner of a minor league baseball team it keeps me young um these are young guys um, really, I couldn't tell. Yeah, exactly. So these <laughs> are kidding. these are young guys that I get to interact with, yeah. cheer them on, support them, mm -hmm. and and hopefully they leave the Wahoos and go on to bigger and better things. We're a Double A baseball team, so you want them to go to Triple A. You want them to go to the Marlins. We're with the Marlins, and so you want them to go play the big franchise, the MLB team. And so, so you you might only see them for a little bit, but the interaction with them, not only am I trying to inspire them, they're inspiring me more because they're keeping me young. My son's enjoying it. My son wants to play baseball because he gets to hang with them, batting practice and different things, and, and they interact with them. And so it's, that's the fun part. The that's family, like I said, the family involvement. And you feel like a family when you're dealing with the players, the young players and, and the coaches. It's got to be pretty cool, too, for you to see your son hanging out with all of them and practicing with them and, you know, getting to know all the different players, right? It's like inside it, access, basically. Right, and when you have these young guys that are trying to make it, I mean, you're talking teens, young 20s, um, but they're spending time with an 11-year-old boy, and they're just loving life. Yeah. And so that's what gets me back to where, I mean, I'm about to be 45, and I'm like, man, I need to, I need to get back to that, the childlikeness mm -hmm. of golf and, and spending time. And, and I hate to say that, but this is what, this is what Liv does. I Liv, was going to say, does, that, does, Liv, does this environment bring that out of you? 100%. you got the music, you got um, the fans, you got the team. It brings me back to the childhood of high school golf with the team, yep, college, college golf with the team. Yep. And so professional golf now has that. Well, with your experience as an owner of a minor league baseball team, is there any resemblance to maybe being an owner of Range Goats GC and running your team and your teammates and and all that stuff yes my um my gm of the range goats randall wells he's um he was there day one with the other owner uh, 2012 when they started the minor league baseball team um they were friends and partners and um so he's been there and we've tried to start we've had to start the minor league team from scratch yeah you know you bring it in from another city so now you have to start it and get the city involved and so same thing with range goats you're starting from scratch mm -hmm. so you're starting from scratch and building it so luckily for us we already had that business side with trying to do that with a franchise yeah. so now we're trying to bring that knowledge over to the range goats and as you've seen the party hole uh, the flags, the banners, the fan zone, the golf bag, the golf bag. The but golf you're bag. but you're using that that minor league minor league baseball experience, fun, energy, mm -hmm. and that's what you're trying to bring to the golf course. And so that's what for us, I, we feel like we have a leg up on all the other teams because we have that background. You guys have really cool stuff, and and you know your team colors, the branding, even stuff on socials that I've seen. It's it's really really cool. So, anyways, let's uh, let's go hit your golf ball, shall we? It's in the fairway. Just remember that. I'll do this for you. Oh, you're going to laser it? At extra fee, obviously, but I'll laser it. What do you think? What do I think you're right now? You're a field guy, right? So. Oh, man, now, you, now you're calling me out. I'm going to say 105 because no, no. Is that one, your final no, answer? No, Would 110. you like to call a friend? I, I go by five, so 110. I'm going 110. It's probably going to be like 111, though. Oh, 113. <sighs> Man, okay. Close. Man, you even got range goats on your way. Well, horizon. I got a guy, you know, that can do stuff. So you got a few guys that can do stuff for you. Um, All right, what are you going to hit here? I've got a, a bit of a What'd you say off. it was? You said 113? 113. What do you got that wind doing? Uh, Down from the left, probably perfect. your 8 o'clock. Oh, perfect. So I've got a 56 degree little sand wedge. I'm going to try to take a little off. Got a bit of a backstop, so. Okay. Yeah, spin it off that. But I'm going to try to, if anything, try to favor the left. Come on, wind. Bite. Spin. Oh, get up. Something. Do something. A little left, something though. something productive. It was close. It wasn't my fault. Let me clean this. Let me show you how to clean this. It's never the caddy's fault, is it? So you just wipe it like that, and then you just put it in the bag, very bottom right there by the putter. There you go. Are you sure it's not in that one? I think no. it's in that one actually. It's like right They're here. They're the exact same. It's oh, one. Well, yeah. Oh, look. Can we show that on camera? That was the same. 
compartment. It's not the same compartment. Let's go make this birdie putt. <laughs> I love watching you play. I mean, it's just extremely entertaining as a golf fan, as a you know ex-professional golfer myself. The way you dissect the golf course and, and, and the shots that you visualize and you see, it, it's so unique and very unlike a lot of your, I would say your, you know, most players on tour. Yep. You're a field guy. You had no lessons ever, right? Yep. When was it in your life that you're like, yeah, I got this talent. I should pursue it or I want to pursue it. Um, <laughs> many stories there. Um, <laughs> so when I was 13 years old, I played in a junior tournament um, called the Divot Derby back in Pensacola. And the what? I, it's called the Divot Derby. Oh, Divot Derby. So um, nice. junior tournament and I shot 71-71. Um, then the last day I shot 62. I won by, 40 something shots right <laughs> and so but shooting 62 that's when my parents looked up and was like hey 71 is great i'm not saying yeah. 71 was bad 71 71 at, at 13 years old yeah but shooting the 62 10 birdies um eight pars that's when they were like hold on a second we might have something here and um so we just want to keep doing the same things run with it mm -hmm. don't change anything why would you change something and my dad kept saying if you keep improving um, then why mess with it? Right. Like if, there's if, no if reason. If it works. Why? Don't, there's no reason yeah. to get a stru instructor. No reason to do this. No reason to do that. And then going back now, let's go back to the shots and the way I play golf. You gotta remember, and I know it's hard because I did it too for mm. those few weeks that I got to commentate. But when you do that, you're you're. Um, we we try to make people a robot, right? Yeah. This is the idea of golfer, right? But we all have different minds, different ways we're created, different ways that we think. Some more anxious, nervous, mm -hmm. anxiety in life, myself. Um, <laughs> and so for me, it's the way I can be creative. If I'm gonna be a robot, you know, like you know, hitting a lot of irons off the tees, yeah. that's not fun for me. I don't get to be creative and, and shape shots and do things. So I like golf courses where I can do that. Um, so if you look where I've played golf, played well at, it's because I can create. And, but then you got other guys, um, not to call anybody out, but you got guys that are more robotic, right? right. We're gonna hit the fairway, we're gonna hit the green, we're gonna try to make the putt. Um, that's just how they see golf. That's how they've been taught. Yeah. And my visual, my creative, I wanna be able to shape shots and do things because I can't, you know, I don't, I'm outside the box. You yeah. know, mentally yeah. I'm outside the box. <laughs> I'm always outside the box thinking. And so that's how I play golf and that's why I play golf that way. And there's not a moment in your career where you're like, I mean, you've had a long career so far, yeah. right? and there's not one moment you're like thinking, mm, maybe I should. When I was, so in 2015, 16, 17, when I was going through my mental struggle, my lowest point in my life, mental struggles about who I am as a person and what I'm doing in golf and all these things, right? All these mm -hmm. mental things. That's when I talked about reaching out, but the people I reached out to that are in the game of golf, they said, nah, man, it's not your golf. Yeah. It's something else. And they yeah. could see it. I couldn't see it. And then I saw it, right? So. When I got to my lowest point, I was like, ah, why can't I, the ball, it's not, and yeah. it was it was something else going on. Right. It wasn't golf. It wasn't, I'm, the physical part of golf is not my issue. It's yeah. always been mental. Right. And at that point, I was in the darkest place of my life. Right. So that's when I, I reached out. I reached out to a couple people, not to throw their names out there, but they, they called me and they were like, you don't need help. Yeah. You need outside of golf help. Right. And so I was like, thank you for sharing, great, and then here we are talking to you now. Yeah, well, it's good to see you, you know, back in your happy place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you want me to give you a read? Yeah. Let me... This is where I'm in trouble. This Just for the I'm... record, I'm dead last in putting this year, so. Must be this head cover. Yeah. Although it's a pretty cool head cover. <laughs> it's a great head cover. So you made fun of it, then you liked it. I liked it. Okay, what do you got? I'm going, I'm not even going to look at it. Whatever you say, I'm going. That's a lie. I've already looked at it. I would go. It's not going to move very much, actually. Yeah. Which way you have it going? You haven't which, said which way yet. No. This is a. Which way do you think it's going? Which you know, isn't that why I Caddy's know for always, a fact. Caddy's always, even... Caddy's always say this, right? What do you think? No, no. I'm. I have to ask you because I don't want to change your opinion. I want you to tell me the truth, and then I'll do whatever I want to do. I would say. This is taking left, a long left time. Left edge. Left edge. Left edge. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> I could lose my job, right here giving him the wrong read. I do this for a living, but. So 
Me personally, I had it just outside the left. Yeah, that's what I said. Outside just outside, left. you said just outside the left edge? I misheard you, sorry. I mean. You got it uphill or are you downhill? you on my English now? You got it uphill or downhill? No, you said edge. It's uphill. Uphill. Come on! Must be your caddy. Oh, it God. It must be your caddy, right? Man, you get a be. raise. Listen, my rate Thank just you. went off real Thank quick. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man, first birdie all day. First birdie all day, guys. Best caddy in the world, ladies and gentlemen, right here. Man, I'm so thankful I made that putt. I'd have been so mad. The rest of the day, I'd have been mad. All right, Bubba, we're going to close off this chat with a question that I like to ask. Okay, I hope it's an easy one. What would you tell your 21-year-old self? <laughs> um, keep your head up. That's what I would say. I wouldn't change. There's nothing in my life that I would change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my parents told me to quit the University of Georgia and, and go turn professional because I didn't play my senior year. Um, but I said, no, I, I want to grow. I want to be here. I want to be with my teammates. I want to be there. And that's when I met my wife. That's when I met Angie. So. I wouldn't change that time of my life, right? Mm -hmm. I met my wife just after I was 21. Uh, so why would, I, why would I change that? And so I would just tell myself, keep my head up, keep grinding. Good advice. You Sage. can tell I've thought about that before. Sage, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. You've obviously it's done some reflecting. It's kind of worked through my life before, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Thank you. I, uh, I, I kind of enjoy that. I wouldn't say I want to do it for 18 holes, but. Well, if we keep making birdies, you would. <laughs> be a good payday yeah. after after 54 no, holes. You know? you're like, not only did you ditch the broadcast team, you stole one of their talents to go carry a bag. Could I, hey, it's listen, life, you know? We can talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we can talk. Thank you. All right, thank you.